public schools should be places where, first of all, young people feel safe, places that promote the the development of, of human beings as, as whole, that cares about the different areas of, of, of their lives. Um, academics is one part of it, but making sure that that they feel supported and that they feel loved and that they are perfect as they are. I'm Kaylin Brandt, and you are listening to Our Stories, Our World. This podcast series led by young people like me features Chicago stories about public health, public safety, and public education. Each episode uses the power of a single personal photo to spark a conversation about what matters to our guests. The theme of this episode is public education. I first learned of Rosana Rodriguez as the alderman of Chicago's 33rd Ward. In our conversation about public education, she described a photograph that shows how her experience as a teacher influenced the way she thinks about her work and our city's future. In my current occupation, I'm a member of the Chicago City Council, and and I am definitely trying to influence the way in which we engage with education. I'm a teacher by trade. That's what I went to college for, and that's what I worked on in Puerto Rico um, for several years before I moved to to Chicago. I am also an activist, and I'm an organizer. I have been a unionized teacher, and I have seen teachers' unions fight for better conditions for everybody, not only for teachers, but for students. So my background as an activist and as an organizer definitely shapes my idea that things can definitely be better. The picture that I offered um, is a picture of a former student of mine. Her name was Coco. Coco is sitting on a chair in my former classroom. She is a black trans woman. She's sitting on an armchair that I had in my, in my classroom. She is wearing a navy blue sweater and black pants. And in her left hand, she has a sock puppet that she made that day in our integrated arts class. The wall behind her is blue, like a, a, a light blue color. She's smiling in the picture. I used to be a teacher at uh, Pedro Albizu Campos High School. That is in Humboldt Park. The school is at California Division. Pedro Albizu Campos High School is an alternative school, so the students in in Pedro Albizu Campos are students who the education system failed them, um, and and they had to look for an alternative in order to get their high school diploma. I was working with students who did not have resources. I was working with students that were experiencing extreme poverty. I was working with students who were parents already. I was working with students who were gang affiliated. I was working with students who were uh, survivors of abuse, students with drug addictions or substance abuse problems. I was working with students that have that had different learning needs and abilities and that were not necessarily diagnosed. And I was learning how to navigate that moment, right? And understanding what these students needed from me and realizing that I did not have the tools that I needed in order to be able to serve them. That particular day, we were doing puppets in my classroom and we were trying to come up with stories. So we were creating characters through puppets and we were trying to come up with stories. And that was the, that was the character that, that Coco was creating. So what you see in the picture is a puppet made out of socks. 
because that's what we could get at that point. And I was teaching integrated arts. So I was looking for ways to get them to be creative and using it in a therapeutic way. I was really trying to get them to engage with working with their hands, with imagining things, with coming up with storylines and um and that particular day that we were working on the puppets, it was a lot of fun. They actually had a lot of fun creating puppets and talking to one another and coming up with different storylines. It was important to me that Coco felt like she was accepted just as she was. It was important to me that she felt like that was a safe space for her to be herself. It was important to me to make sure that I was giving the students the most that I could give them without completely draining myself of energy. I remember there was a moment during that year that I worked there that I would come to work and I would park and I would spend like five to 10 minutes just crying in my car before I went in because I knew that that day, just like every day, the students were going to need things from me that I couldn't give them. I gained a lot of understanding while working at that job of the reality of a Chicago that I didn't know, of the reality of, of, of students who, who are gang affiliated, for example, and understanding why. Why do young people join gangs? Well, they join gangs because they need protection and support. And that's something that is not being given to them. And it, it might not look like what we want it to look like, but that is where they feel accepted. Coco is no longer alive. And uh, she, she lost her life in a, in a violent way. And I... Whenever I look at pictures from our time together, um, I want everybody to know who Coco was. Coco was somebody who was not afraid to be who she was, even if that meant that she was not going to be able to be around her father or even other family members. Coco was so brave, resilient, and funny and she had this beautiful spirit. She would stand up to anybody who would try to bully her. And at the same time, she was incredibly sweet. And, uh, and she loved laughing and having fun. And she loved makeup and Sephora. And, and she was beautiful and amazing. When I picked that picture, I picked that picture thinking about what is possible and what the reality is. So when I think about public education, I think about all the things that we're lacking, right? Like education should be, and in the context of Chicago, but, but everywhere, public schools should be places where, first of all, young people feel safe, places that promote the, the development of, of human beings as as whole, that cares about the different areas of, of, of their lives. Um, academics is one part of it, but making sure that, that they feel supported and that they feel loved and that they are perfect as they are. And, um, and in that particular picture, I was trying to ensure that we were doing that. But obviously, I also had the challenge of no support, right? Like the social worker at the school that I used to work at where that picture was taken was part-time. We didn't even have a full-time social worker to tend to the needs of students that were deeply traumatized. Coco was a trans student that was not accepted by her father. Um, and she, she was deeply traumatized by it. At some point, she moved into a, a young people shelter in Humboldt Park called El Rescate that is specifically geared towards, it, it addresses the needs of young people who are L part of the LGBTQI community. And the closest 
people to her at that point were the people around her. So it was her teachers and her um, classmates and, and the people that she built community with. And in that particular case, I had a very clear understanding of what public education was supposed to do in that space. It was supporting her and making her feel like a whole human being capable of anything. In that particular picture, she is smiling and she was having a really good time in the classroom that day. And when that happened to me, that was everything, right? That I was able to create a space in my classroom where, where she felt supported, where she felt happy, where she felt loved, where she felt creative and and, and felt like she could accomplish things, right? And And that's what I want for public education to be. So I think I share that picture because because I understand how how difficult reality is right now and also because I know that we deserve something better and something better is possible. This is one of the few pictures that I have of Coco in my classroom. It's important that she's smiling. It reminds me that I was able to create a space where where she could smile. I want people to know that students like Coco are out there in every classroom, in every school, and that we need to be doing so much work to fight for them, to stay alive, for them to stay protected, for them to stay safe and healthy. And I want people to fight for that. I want people to make sure that they are fighting for the right of Black trans students to to be safe and, and for all of our students. But this this story is, is about Coco and how a strong public education system could maybe have saved her life. This has been Our Stories, Our World, a limited podcast series created by Chicago Youth. Our Stories, Our World is brought to you by Public Narrative and A Picture's Worth, two nonprofits focused on community building and narrative change. Thanks to Alderwoman Rosana Rodriguez for sharing her story, and to our story gatherer, Kaylin Brandt, for interviewing and hosting. Our music was created by Chicago artist Malki. Our podcast artwork is by Dan McDonald Studios. Our audio producer is Brooklyn's own Samantha Gatsek. The executive producers of Our Stories, Our World are Alyssa Yancey and Mareva Lindo. That's me. Find our other episodes and detailed notes at apicturesworth.org slash public narrative. If you enjoyed this episode, we hope you'll share it and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Support our work by making a donation at publicnarrative.org slash donate. Tune in again in two weeks for the next episode of Our Stories, Our World. Thank you for listening.